Hi, everyone. Hi, welcome and, and good evening. And thank you again for joining us tonight. Um, my name is Jen Burling. I'm the Director of Sustainable Tourism Programs here at Green Step. I have a few members of our team here with us tonight. We have Shaylin Robertson. She is also going to be co-facilitating tonight with me. And we have Adam and Christy also on our team who are gonna pop in and out uh, and help us facilitate some great conversation this evening. So thank you to Noelle and to Fab for initiating this great program and for engaging us to support further development on the topic of sustainability. We're really excited to be back here tonight for the second of four workshops in this series. This is meant to be an interactive workshop. There will be an opportunity to discuss ideas and, and share some thoughts and, and uh, we'd really love it if you would join us by turning your cameras on if you feel comfortable uh, and there will be some breakout sessions um, happening as well and um, it would be great if you could turn your cameras on for that we might be in a fairly small group as Noel mentioned. Um, a couple of housekeeping notes this workshop is being recorded as mentioned so you can always go back and review any sections where you may need a little bit more additional time to review and reflect. Um, we do cover a lot in this in this 90 minute session. Um, so feel free to go back and take a pause on any of it. The, the information may be new to some of you, and it does take some time to digest and uh, really allow you to add relevance for your own business. Um, there is likely a great deal of knowledge in this virtual room and you know your business and your community best, so you will be able to provide the most relevant examples that may help those within the community to learn how they may be able to implement similar initiatives, programs, or practices that will help them to reduce their negative impacts. We will have time for questions at the end of the session. So please make note of any as we go through the session, uh, or you could jot them into the chat box if you like, if something occurs to you along the way. And we will try to address all of those questions at the end of the session. So we have a packed agenda for tonight's workshop, um, but we will try to move at a good pace again to allow some good discussion and time for questions at the end. We are really here to facilitate conversation. We want you guys to be thinking about your businesses and what makes the most sense uh, and, and what is most relevant to your environment. We will start by reviewing the program objectives, as well as a quick overview of what we covered in workshop one, if you were unable to join us for that session. And we will recap the Green Step framework that we are moving through at the moment to see where we have been and where we are going. We will then move to reviewing the results of your Green Step sustainability assessment, not on an individual basis, but more as a group discussion. And we will break into some small groups as mentioned. After reviewing the assessment results, we will discuss some other tools you could use to capture more data to broaden your baseline metrics. If you should choose to, you could use the assessment as your standalone baseline, but there are also other metrics you may wish to consider so that you can monitor progress and ultimately see improvement or a consumption reduction, for example, depending on the data being monitored. And finally, we will discuss where you would like to see your business or organization in 2030 or 2050. What does that future state look like? This is an exercise in trying to remove any existing bias or letting potential barriers creep in and looking beyond into that perfectly sustainable world. We will give you time to draft some vision statements for your organization and then share your best one to help inspire others and foster optimism. You will want to consider these vision statements when you begin to draft your goals and your action plan, creating goals that will help to support that future vision to become a reality. So as you can see here on our agenda, that's sort of what we're going to cover today in summary. 
So let's take a minute to remind ourselves of the program goals and objectives. Our goals through this process that we are about to embark upon are to improve general knowledge on the topic of sustainable tourism, while also providing a pathway to understand how you can work to improve your sustainability performance and in turn help to progress sustainability within the region. Building upon the established FAB pledge and sustainable tourism code of good practice as a guide during our time and over the next few sessions, we will aim to support the objectives laid out in the pledge through the following steps. So this is the, the five step process that we're gonna go through, the, the learn step, which we covered in workshop one, although not to say there won't be more learnings happening in the other sessions as well. Uh, the measure step that we're in now, establishing that baseline measurement of how your business is performing. Then we're going to plan. So we're going to take those results and, and look ahead, start to plan how we're looking, going to look to improve those results. And then we're going to act and implement. So what are some of those action items that we can, um, that we can draft so that we can actually make some progress over you know, a short to medium time, time frame? And then, of course, reporting and, and achieving those those results that you're that you're envisioning for yourself, uh, and we'll cover that in the last session. So we're going to start off with a little interaction here. We're going to pop up a poll for all of you to complete. So we're going to do that in just a second, and you can see here the question is posed, and we're really just looking to to hear some feedback from all of you. So. Which of the following options best describes your motivation for participating in the sustainable tourism program that's being offered? Um, so you've got your answer options there. Sustainability is important to our guests and our visitors. We want to be recognized and market our existing sustainability efforts and initiatives. We feel that sustainability is becoming a requirement in order to stay competitive and relevant. We felt that learning more about sustainability would help to motivate our staff to get involved in our sustainability initiatives. We want to understand where we can do better. And really, we just want to do the right thing, which is also a really great reason. So we'll give you 10 or 20 seconds to anonymously respond. I'm not sure if it lets you choose more than one, because certainly there could be more than one motivation motivating factor. Two more seconds. Oh, we're not quite at 100% participation, 92% participation. Might be one of us that's holding that back from, from 100. Okay, why don't we end the poll, Christy, and see what our results are. Oh, we got 100% responded, that's great. So we are gonna share those results with you now. All right, so we want to understand where we can do better is actually the leading result, uh, leading number one motivating factor, followed by we want to do the right thing. And those are very common across the board, uh, all, very common responses from, from our businesses that we work with. And then a little sprinkling um, of motivation coming from some of those other areas as well. So super interesting. Thank you for, for your responses there. So to start, we will just take a minute to review. Um, sorry, the, the I'm just moving my screen around here. We're just going to move that poll out of the way. Um, so just a minute to review some of the key learnings from workshop one. So for those of you who may not have been present or who have not had a chance to review the recording yet. We covered a lot in that presentation, but in summary, in just a couple of slides, um, we covered the definition, the principles, and the concept pertaining to sustainable tourism, as well as building a common language around the terminology being used to describe sustainable tourism, including regenerative, eco, and responsible tourism as well. We also reviewed the idea of moving from where we are today to a point where we have regenerated, restored, and rebuilt what has been damaged. The formal definition of sustainable tourism as defined by the UNWTO, excuse me, 
uh, says that tourism that takes full account of its current and future economic, social, and environmental impacts, addressing the needs of visitors, the industry, the environment, and host communities. In doing this, sustainable tourism ensures that all resources are managed in such a way that our global and local economic, social, and aesthetic needs can be fulfilled, while at the same time maintaining cultural integrity, essential ecological processes, biological diversity, and life support systems. Knowing the history and understanding the principles of sustainable tourism is the basis of the foundation of knowledge that is needed before you can move forward towards actionable change as it relates to your business operations and practices. We also talked about the business case for sustainability, including both the key drivers and the benefits. And one of the key takeaways was to position sustainability as an enabler to access additional opportunities while also reducing environmental and financial risks to a business or organization. The research, the research shows that the consumer and employee demand is there. A business owner's willingness is there. The urgency is ever pressing and the solution is knowledge, resourcefulness, creativity, and working together as an industry to uncover ideas, activities, solutions that are feasible for small business. Start small, commit to, get, commit to dedicating time like you are tonight and energy to improving your knowledge and setting small goals that you feel you're able to tackle. But it does all start with finding that internal motivation that we were just speaking about and drive to do the right thing by playing your part in the solution to leave our communities and planet in a better place for the next generation. So with that being said, we want to help provide you with that roadmap that you need to start achieving some wins, some successes, which we all know is a key to staying motivated to tackle the next item on the list. Wins lead to more wins. We are now in our second of four sessions, and today we will be building upon the foundation that was set to talk about measuring a sustainability baseline using the sustainable tourism assessment, which was introduced in that last session, and where each of you would have received instructions on how to access and complete that online assessment already. If you haven't completed it already, don't worry, you still have time. We won't be going through it in detail tonight, but we will be giving you some homework to do before the next workshop. And if you have already started or at least created your account, I would ask you to log into that online assessment now so that we can have you reference your results in the next section of the workshop. Remember, sustainability is a broad topic and not one to master overnight. So this assessment is thorough and robust, and it is not a simple task. And some of the questions may be difficult to answer or interpret. If you aren't sure how to answer the question, just make a note of it and come back to it later or answer it once you have a better understanding of the context. So today, as we will be covering measuring your baseline. So that's a term that we use to sort of figure out how your business is currently performing under the umbrella of sustainability, using sustainability indicators as a measurement tool to gather data on that current performance or of your business or destination. You need to know how you're doing now so you can set reasonable goals for improvement. We're also gonna talk about how to interpret those results. How do you use your results to identify strengths and opportunities? And we'll then walk you through some vision, a visioning exercise, as I mentioned earlier, to help paint the picture of where you're going. And then we can work backwards from there. So just before we move into some new material, it's really good to remind ourselves where we are in the sustainability process. Remembering that this is a circular process that should happen really annually or biannually. We move from learn to measure, to plan, to act, to achieve. In workshop one, we focused on learning, building that common language. In this workshop, we will be focusing on the second step, measuring through the sustainability assessment. And in the next workshop, the third step, planning by creating a set of goals and actions for your organization. 
which once implemented should improve your score over the course of time. The last step will be to act on your plan, implementation strategies, as well as how to communicate your plan to your stakeholders who are invested in your success and who will want to help support you in achieving your goals. So the theme of today's presentation is to measure. So measure can also mean establishing a baseline of current performance. We will be using the Green Step Sustainable Tourism Assessment to establish your current baseline. And we will also speak a bit later on in the presentation about other ways to gather relevant data surrounding sustainability in specific categories, should you wish to sort of acquire a broader understanding of where your current position is. This is where you're starting on your sustainability journey. So you should think of it as establishing that starting point. And each year you will measure your improvement against your initial score, similar to how you might measure your increase in revenue year over year, or your increase in guest visits, or your increase in marketing traction. All of these very common business metrics are ingrained in how we gauge and understand how the business is performing as well as the health of the business. Ideally, we hope to see sustainability metrics being discussed and reviewed as habitually as these more common data points. I recently, I wanted to give an example. I recently heard from a destination management organization that their teams are no longer using visitor numbers as their metric of performance. They are using their sustainability targets to gauge success against their strategic initiatives. For example, their carbon reduction target, their waste diversion target, their local employment rates, et cetera. Really, if you want to drive certain behavior, then naturally, naturally you will need to shift how performance is being measured. So once those targets and performance metrics are identified and put in place, it will be important to monitor them so that your team can see the progress, which as mentioned earlier, helps to feed that motivation and wins lead to more wins. So we're now going to transition away from us speaking, <laughs> and we are going to give you all a chance to reflect on your own assessment results. We will be um, going into breakout sessions a little bit later on in the presentation, but we do want to have a little bit of a group discussion to start. And don't worry, it'll be an easy, an easy question to start. So again, if you haven't logged in to your assessment um, yet, then please do. And we'll just have it up on the screen as my colleague Shay goes through um, sort of an interactive demonstration of the use of our tool and how you can really interpret those, those results. And again, don't worry if you haven't completed the full assessment, it'll still be helpful to see how you're gonna be able to access those results and how to really interpret uh, the results. So I'm gonna turn that over now to Shay and she will take us through a demonstration of our tool. And I'm just gonna stop sharing my screen and Shay will pull up her screen and she will also introduce herself. Great. Thanks, Jen. Just give me one second. All right. Can everybody see this okay? Perfect. Yeah, looks good. All right. Hi, everybody. My name is Shaylin. I am a sustainable tourism specialist here at GreenStep. I've been here for just over two years now, um, and I've been working very closely with our business members in our certification and other programs, um, providing them one-on-one -on -one support um, to find those areas of improvement that are most applicable to their operations. So as Jen mentioned, I'm going to be walking through the online assessment tool, which hopefully for some of you will look familiar if you've had a chance to create an account. I just wanted to show this login page. Um, the link was shared just a few minutes ago. So once you log in, this is what you'll see on the main page. Um, so when you log in, you'll be able to see, you can launch the assessment um, you can view the questionnaire from there, and you can see the four main categories 
that were used to measure your performance. So those are management, social and economic impacts, natural and cultural interactions, and environmental impacts. The assessment consists of 87 questions. And you can see on that last section, environmental impacts, um, there is a button at the bottom to submit assessment. So once you have clicked that submit, Button, you've answered all of the questions, um, you'll get a little note saying that it was submitted successfully, and then you can pull up your scorecard. So you click view report. And this is an example that we've put together so that we could share this tool with you. Um, you'll see the name of your business at the top, and you'll also see your sustainability score overall as a percentage. Um, You'll see that it does say unverified. Um, this is because the results shown here have not been verified by a green step assessor, which takes place after the submission of evidence when businesses are suing, pursuing sustainable tourism certification. Um, and these grading levels that are shown next to that percentage show what potential grading you could potentially achieve should you participate in the program. Um, or that's what we assess our businesses on. The scorecard shows your performance in each of those four categories overall as a percentage, and you can drop down each category to see the subcategory performance in each. So it's shown by both points earned out of points available and then as an overall percentage. So here we just wanted to take a pause for a second. Um, before we move on to learning how to interpret these results, um, we wanted to just open up the floor, ask if there was anybody who had maybe already completed their assessment um, to unmute themselves, if you're willing to share some thoughts on the experience, what maybe surprised you, what did you observe or learn, or were there any general thoughts from the experience of completing a sustainability assessment for the first time? So feel free to unmute, unmute yourself, raise your hand or pop um, those into the chat. We'd love to hear from you. Shannon here, I guess I can share. I did complete the assessment. <laughs> can you hear me okay? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. Yes. Um, um, yes, the questions were very, very detailed. And um, I was like, I don't even know what this one means. Um, I, I completed my assessment. I got a score of 34%, which although I do try in my business to, I'm in a clothing store business, so it can be very difficult in terms of um, uh, sustainability. I do try where possible um, to meet those kind of goals um, and work with companies that also have that kind of mindset. Um, but so I was expecting a low score because I know what I do is it might be more than other people do, but not enough. Um, and so I was like, a plan? No. Uh, do I have a sustainability plan? I'm like, Noelle, like a formal plan? <laughs> <laughs> so um, it's definitely something, you know, I'm that in my business, we're doing casually and it's like, just really opening my eyes to how formal this plan should be with metrics and measures and goals and um, instead of just the little bit that we're doing now. So um, that's all I have to say about that, I guess. Yeah, thanks for sharing, Shannon. It's something that I hear all the time from business owners. And typically I say, you know, for our certified members who are sitting in that gold range and they really want to push themselves to platinum, it's those management plans and policies and written procedures that really mm -hmm. will push them above and beyond to have those best practices. Mm -hmm. And I've seen a really diverse array of ways that businesses do this, particularly from owner operated businesses that may only have themselves or one other person to help these things move forward. Sometimes it's just one page. Um, and that's okay, but it just means that they are taking the time each month to kind of revisit, review progress, and sometimes that's all it is, and that's that's great, mm -hmm. and that's what we're looking for here. So thank you for sharing. 
And Tanya, I did see your comment as well. Thanks for sharing that. Um, that's a really good point, And it's something that I want to speak to as we go through the questions. This assessment framework really is intended. It's something that we use to measure any type of tourism business. So what we do when we work one-on-one -on -one with businesses and what we want to do together with your group is to really tease out those areas that you have the most impact. So we always tell our members and businesses using this tool, try not to focus too much on those areas that are maybe don't have as much applicability to your business because every business is going to have those questions. Um, it's really a holistic framework and our job and your job will be to tease out, great, so you scored well on social and economic impact, that's amazing. So maybe there's other areas you know, in that category where you can have a greater impact um, or environmental as well. Alberto, please go ahead. Hi, um, I also completed the assessment. Um, I echo Shannon's thought on, on the management plans and all of that. Um, I've been monitoring some things, but not, I don't have quite a plan. Uh, although, you know, it, like this year we've put up solar panels and, and uh, so we're, we're working long-term into increasing our sustainability, but um, it's not something that we have on paper. Um, and also, um the uh because of the nature of my business i'm not i'm not a tourism business per se i have a farm and i offer tours and things and i i really want to create an environment where people can come and see what regenerative agriculture looks like and uh you know in, enjoy the peace of a uh, of the country and all of that so that's why i joined this program um but there are a lot of things in the assessment that don't apply to my business. And also other ones that um, uh, like the, the water consumption, for example, that I don't have a way to measure because I'm not hooked to um, like uh, city water. So I'm, I'm a little bit more off, off grid than, than an urban business would be. So I, I, I found challenges related to that as well, um, but overall it was an interesting exercise, and I'm I'm looking forward to um, sort of learning ways to go deeper into some of the sections and and uh, and improve overall. Thanks, Alberto. Um, yeah, that's a really good point. Building off of Tanya's point as well, um, it. And I think that's what we're going to try and discuss and, and work through today. Ultimately, you know, maybe water conservation is not a focus for you and that's okay. Maybe there's other areas um, on natural and cultural impacts, particularly for what sounds like your operation um, or that community engagement that might be a better fit for that long-term planning and action plan. So we were kind of in the same um, boat as Alberta, where some of the questions in the assessment didn't particularly pertain to us as a biosphere. So our score was a lot lower than what I would assume coming into this as a biosphere, because our entire organization is built around sustainability and, and um, good environmental practices. But I think where we fell short was in the tracking. So in at the end of the assessment, a lot of the questions um, in terms of how we're tracking this, um, we just don't have that in place yet. That's why I'm really excited about the action plan part of this um, so that we can start to implement those practices and, and really track what we're doing. Um, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and I have some, um, some points about tracking as well um, that I wanna speak to and, and ways that you can simplify it. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be a big complicated spreadsheet. It's really meant to be a dedicated, I guess, information hub, if you want to call it. Sometimes it's it's just one page, and that's that's totally fine. Um, but it's the intention that matters behind the tracking. 
And if I could just add to that, this you know the com common trend of small business is 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 not is not having that documentation of that of, of a plan per se. So that's certainly one of those tangible takeaways that we hope that you will come away with after these four sessions. It may be it may be like Shay said, a, a one or two pager where you're just honing in on a couple of items where you feel you have you know immediate impact or immediate influence on on making making that change happen and you know out of 87 questions you can't we can't tackle them all at once and like Shay mentioned um you know this this assessment was built uh, on the premise of it being as applicable to the whole industry as possible but we do know that some businesses you know if they don't have a bricks and mortar location for example or they have less interaction with with visitors than other types of businesses might have then some of those questions just aren't going to be as applicable but everyone is in that boat so you know we kind of ask that you focus on those 80 90 percent of the questions where you do have um you do have control essentially thanks jen and just one final i guess comment before i dive back into the assessment tool, I would say probably the average score for most businesses who are taking this for the first time is probably around 35 to 45%. Um, so, you know, we've seen actually a big growth from businesses who've joined us several years ago, um, and they've in implemented a lot of those actions in areas where they did have influence, and they've seen that score and performance go up over time. Um, so if you're looking to somehow benchmark yourself, that's just something to keep in the back of your mind. All right. So jumping back to the online assessment tool, as mentioned, we're going to walk through how you can use this to identify some opportunities for improvement. Ultimately, this report and scorecard will serve as your baseline measurement of sustainability. As you implement your goals and your action plan and reassess in future years, your score should improve and you can review your performance again um, year over year against this initial baseline that you hopefully now have or will have soon. So in the report section, you can start this process of looking for improvement by looking in those subcategories where performance is lowest. So I've gone ahead in advance and pulled out those three subcategories in this example assessment. So the three that I have here are energy conservation at 29%. I have accessibility at 33% and guest engagement at 42%. So this is a way you can do it for yourselves and we're gonna do it um, together as a group shortly, but pull out those three lowest subcategories and hone in on those or areas as, as improvement. So in that first and lowest category of energy conservation, I'm actually gonna go back to your assessment results, which do save automatically. They're not gonna disappear if you resubmit. It's, it's a live assessment tool and those responses will stay there. So I will navigate to that subcategory of energy conservation. And then I'm gonna just start to review the questions familiarize myself with what I was assessed on in that subcategory and focus in on areas that I maybe didn't check off. So in this first question, 61, what steps does your entity take to conserve energy? Um, I can see, you know, there's a couple of things I've checked off. Maybe I'm using some fuel efficient equipment and technologies, and I've looked at getting um, some energy advice from experts in the field. But there's a couple of options here I haven't ticked off. So there's an opportunity here to potentially improve my energy conservation through either self or staff education and guest education. And I would say the most common examples that I have heard of from businesses doing this is either through operating procedures. So depending on your type of business, that might be for housekeeping staff to do less loads of laundry or or only operating laundry room when the load is full, similarly with a dishwasher. Um, or you can even, it might be as simple as putting signage up um, in a common area or bathroom, um, reminding people to turn off the light um, if it's not on an automatic timer. 
The other opportunities um, are more around what equipment you might have installed on site. So we would be looking at things like in question 63, what percentage of LED lighting do you have? If you don't know that, you might have to go out and physically count and figure out is this LED or not. Um, we're also looking at things like installing programmable thermostats or timers, um, as well as installing Energy Star equipment. And based on the type of business that you have, um, we've given some ideas. You can click on this little information bubble on the side. It'll come up with a tip. Not every question has one, um, but we've tried to put them in where we can. It gives some examples of equipment that you might want to consider. So for most small businesses, your computer monitor, printer, um, those are probably most common to offices. Those are something to consider. Um, and then for larger operations, it might be TVs and guest rooms or refrigerators, washers, dryers, etc. So these all show us areas where we can potentially think about putting these into our action plan based on you know, the assessment that we've done and what has not been checked off. So um, just to touch again on the question around regular monitoring as being a best practice, I know, and I hear this from most business owners that this is difficult to achieve because everybody is so busy, staff and owners on an operational level. Um, so I just wanted to give an example, and this is something that I've actually done for myself recently. Um, as we all know, energy bills are going up at increasing rates, and they are only going to continue increasing in price. So depending on the utility company, some of them will release usage rates, or you should know the usage, um, as well as cost. So a lot of people that I speak with are only looking at the monthly costs. They pay the bill, they don't pay any attention to how much energy was actually used or how much fuel was actually used. But what we find and what best practice is, is if you can look at this, whether it's you know bi-monthly or monthly, start tracking the usage and comparing it against previous years. So even for myself, I compared my December energy usage bill and usage against last December. And what I found was that the usage actually went up a lot more. And so, you know, even though the cost is more, we know that the cost is going to be more. It's not necessarily indicative of whether or not you're conserving energy. Um, so you can start to track that in a spreadsheet, or you can sometimes use live reporting from these utility companies and start to look at that information. And it can be really telling of ways to improve efficiencies in your operations. So I'm going to move on to that next subcategory, um, which was accessibility. So I navigate to that subcategory. Um, this one only has three questions, but each have a different intent. So drop down, looking at the first one here. This is primarily looking at the marketing and communications um, of your business and how they're meeting accessibility requirements. So based on what you're doing, you know, you may not have brochures on site, but you may have a website and you may have printed posters on site. So there are considerations and there's a lot of external experts who have developed guide for businesses in what to look for. But you're looking at things like contrast and text size and having things in various formats, audio and visual, helping to ensure that you're being as accessible as possible. So, you know, in this particular example, I didn't have anything checked off because it maybe wasn't a consideration. But as you start to dive down into this area, you might realize, okay, maybe my website already does consider these things, or maybe I should consider using a different color font that has high contrast so that people, you know, with different abilities can be able to also access the same information. Similarly, if we look at some of the other questions, 48, um, simply providing information on the level of accessibility provided on site is an opportunity and something that could be included in your action plan. Um, it's important, and sorry, I'll just 
back up for a second. A lot of businesses with this question particularly prefer to have conversations in person or over the phone with people to identify if they can meet the need. But it really is best practice to promote the level of accessibility that you have on site somewhere publicly so that those individuals can make informed decisions and plan accordingly. And finally, so we've kind of looked at those first two categories. Now we're gonna to jump to the final subcategory, which was guest engagement as the lowest performant, performance. Sorry. So we've got four questions in that subcategory. Um, and there's a few opportunities that you know my hypothetical business might wanna consider. So looking at question 12, this is how are we engaging guests in sustainability while they are visiting public urban areas natural areas, living cultures, and cultural heritage sites. Knowing that all of you are located in this biosphere and that visitors are coming to a significant natural area, there's a number of ways that we've listed that you have an opportunity to engage guests in this. So some businesses might offer this upon guest booking or guest arrival. Um, some I've seen it in booking confirmation emails. Um, or it could be signage on site. However, you can creatively communicate that to your visitors based on the type of your business. Um, it's a great opportunity to do so. Um, and it sounds like from what I've heard, there's already an existing sustainability code that can be promoted among the region, amongst the region. So that's more so engaging guests in the natural areas that they're coming to. And there's also an opportunity to engage guests in on-site sustainability initiatives. So here, again, there's similar pathways to doing that. Um, one is, again, that briefing upon guest arrival. Maybe there's incentives for guests to participate in on-site initiatives. Um, sometimes I've seen businesses or, or guests, sorry, who arrive via electric vehicle can receive a discount code. Um, or maybe you introduce a small eco fee for guests to pay, which then either can support wildlife conservation, it can promote the biosphere, um, or it can promote energy efficiency upgrades um, for your own operations if that were something you were looking to do. So I tried to keep it as high level as possible. I hope that leaves everyone with some more context and information about how to use the report scorecard and assessment tool um, together to come up with some actions, as well as interpreting that criteria to make it relevant for yourself and choose those areas where you can have the most impact. Ultimately, the tool again is intended to be a framework to identify where you're already doing well and where you have that room for improvement. And just a final, Parting note on that, Jen had already spoken to this, but nobody understands your business the way that you do. So when reviewing these subcategories and questions, look for those areas again that are most applicable to you. Maybe they are not the lowest performing subcategories, maybe there's room for improvement in others, but ultimately you are the one with the knowledge um, and you know really, I guess your, your inspiration for sustainability should also shine through. All right, so I'm just going to switch back over to the slideshow. Can everybody see the slides now? Looks good, Shay. Perfect, thank you. All right, so you've seen this slide briefly, but we're going to just go over it again quickly. So shortly we will be putting you into breakout groups. Um, I think based on the participant level, I'll let the facilitators work out how many should go into each group. Um, but as you go into those groups, we would like you to share three subcategories which reflect your strengths. So your top performing areas and those three subcategories where you had room for improvement um, that were maybe the lowest scoring. If you haven't had a chance to complete the assessment yet, that's okay. Still take a moment to reflect on where you feel you're already doing well, where you feel you're maybe not doing so well and where you'd like to improve. So with that in mind, we'll have about seven minutes to do this. Um, I'm gonna ask 
our team now to break everybody out into those groups, please. All right, and we'll be sending everyone to the breakout rooms in three, two, one. Should we just divvy, divvy up? Maybe we have three rooms? It looks like it did not do the force join for everyone, Christy's but everyone's gone. now in the breakout room. Sweet, okay. Christy's gone, so she must be in a breakout room. She is, so we okay. have four breakout rooms right There's now. four, okay. Yeah. Okay, so I'll go to my number one, or two. Wait, um, just remember those questions if nobody's talking. I what? am going to copy paste them right now and do a broadcast about the what to talk about if they don't have any um, I'm just really. gonna broadcast the the questions but also I'm just reminding you that if nobody's talking you're you're broadcasting the instructions but if yeah. nobody's talking you know what's one thing that your business is doing right now that's related to sustainability or what is one thing you would like to be doing Hello, All right. I've just joined your breakout room. Do you guys have a host yet? Do we have a witch yet? Um, a host from Green Step? In here? Yeah. Oh, I think we have Adam. I think Adam's joining us. They're just they're just putting everybody in the breakout rooms right now. Okay. Let me see. Yes, I think it looks like Adam is joining us in a minute. He's probably just assigning everybody to the other rooms. How's everybody doing? Who's in our team? Oh, there's Adam. Ooh, hello. Hi. How are you, Adam? I'm doing fine. How are you guys doing? Good. I joined this group because it looked like it had the least amount of numbers. So I thought I would participate <laughs> in this in this group uh, with you guys because I did the assessment as well. But leave me till the end. They're the important ones. <laughs> yeah. So now is just a great time. If you did do that assessment, share some of your strengths from what you did when you went through reviewing your process or some weaknesses. And maybe other people here tonight have some ideas. Um, when you say, so I'm just on my, I finally got into my report. I was having trouble getting in and I had to reset my password. <laughs> when I'm on the main screen of my report, I can see my sustainability score 34%. And then what I can see, it says measure. And then I have management, social, economic impacts, natural culture interactions, and environmental impacts. And each of those I have a score in. Um, am I opening those up and then... Yeah, yes, you, click so, those. Click, you click right. Yeah, sorry. You can click right on those, Shannon, and then a drop yeah. menu comes down. Yeah. Yeah. So of those four, like my highest score was in environmental impacts. No, that's a lie. Social oh. and economic impacts, then environmental. Okay. Um, like, am I just picking one thing from under there? Yeah, just one that gets you really excited or passionate about. <laughs> I don't even remember what the questions were for these things. Um, so I it one uh, the question under, was I, under environmental impacts, which is where I turn back to all that forty. Oh no, <clears throat> social and economic impacts. Let's go back there. Sorry, that's where I had forty two percent. The highest I'm within the like categories in there, the measurements in there, the highest is 66% in local employment and labor rights. <laughs> That's actually super good well, I don't <laughs> for know your first time going the questions through. Were. I don't remember what oh, the questions were. To pull up the questions, you would go back into the original assessment. I just want to say, Shannon, you got an amazing score. Um, like you, you had shared it earlier. Our, what did you say your overall score was? Was it 44%? But 34. remember, I, 
sometimes I didn't understand some of the questions. So but who knows really, if I answered them correctly? <laughs> that's really good. I have to, I'll, I'll share our score really quickly because it might shock you guys because we are a conservation organization and our score was 24%. Well, oh, so okay. you obviously got skewed by things that weren't applicable to you or something. I, that's what I think might have happened. But I will say this, we have tons of room for improving because I think a lot of it is that we're not tracking a lot of the things that we do in mm -hmm. an organized way, because what we do primarily is we create these opportunities for other businesses. And we scored really high in community support and infrastructure projects, which is what we're right. doing tonight. <laughs> but in terms of our own internal organization, we're not like tracking, we don't have a brick and mortar business. So we're not tracking water usage and things like that because we just don't have that building anymore but mm -hmm. yeah I found it was it was really interesting do you Annabelle did you want are, were you able to complete the assessment yeah yeah I so I'm with the boat museum for whoever doesn't know um yeah I finished it I'm sort of wondering if maybe I answered some questions incorrectly because uh we got it 47 percent nice that's awesome yeah um, I think definitely we were helped out by all of the cultural connection questions because that's literally all that we do kind of thing. Yeah. So I was able to check off a lot of things there. Um, so the the cultural interactions and really anything to do with community stuff, I was able to check off a lot of things because yeah. that's like you guys the are whole huge main, for that for community. Yeah, it's kind of the whole involvement. yeah everything that we do and our our whole focus. Um, so I think I was we were definitely boosted in that way, but then um. It, we got a 24 percent so <laughs> definitely some room for improvement there um I think like what you were just saying Noel just because we don't monitor or track a lot of it so just by simply doing that um that will help us for sure yeah I scored the lowest in the management section because I don't have a sustainability management system um I don't well I mean maybe I engage my customers a little bit by educating them on the sustainable brands that I carry and eco-conscious brands that I carry. Um, um, and I, I mean, I have on my website that I donate uh, to 1% for the planet of which maybe I'll change next year to fab, right? Noel. And that'd then, be awesome. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, but outside of that, like my lowest, lowest score was in the management section. And Amber, how did you, did you have a chance to finish the assessment? No, no, unfortunately not. I'm playing a little bit of catch up. I'm actually in the process of moving to the region. Oh, so okay. welcome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm in transition. Yeah. I, I just finished ours right before this webinar, the assessment. So so no Me worries. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm one of the co-hosts tonight. So no worries. It's busy times for everyone. It looks like we're all coming back into the main room now. Yeah, I didn't even see the warning. I was deep in conversation. <laughs> Seven minutes flies by with lots of people chatting. It's great. Yeah, it sure did. Sure did. We had some great conversation going. Yeah. Seven minutes went by way too fast. Maybe next time we'll have to extend it a bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, but thank you everybody for sharing. We hope that you had enough time to do so and that you found it interesting to reflect on your performance and, and share and discuss that with other types of businesses in your breakout groups. Um, and as I was just saying in, in my group, it's, this assessment is not meant to make you feel bad. Um, that's not the intention, um, but rather it's just interesting to reflect um, and echoing what we said earlier, often businesses might be doing better in areas that were unexpected or worse in areas where maybe they thought they were doing better than expected. So I just wanted to touch on a few ways that you can improve upon and broaden your understanding of your sustainability performance. As you've seen in the assessment tool, there are a lot of areas to consider within sustainability. And some of those sections may come down to the need for a more comprehensive assessment and deeper dive into some areas. So for example, if energy conservation was an area for improvement, you might actually want to consider accessing an energy assessment to provide you with a more 
accurate and complete picture of where you can make those efficiencies and potential upgrades or retrofits to save you money and reduce your emissions over time to maybe reach some more of those loftier goals that we'll get to in the next session. So typically, you know, in an energy assessment, they might ask for more detailed information than what you would provide in this assessment framework about the specific models that you're using for your furnace or your AC units, um, et cetera, and also the usage amounts. So there would typically be a set of recommendations or rebate or grant opportunities that you could access to improve specifically in that area. There's a few other areas listed here um, that you can work to broaden your understanding of, including conducting a waste audit, doing a water audit, um, carbon footprint measurement, diversity, equity, inclusion assessment, accessibility access assessment, or through employee guest or resident surveys. And we will be following up after today's workshop with some additional resources and information on how you can maybe move down some of these pathways. So with all of that, I'm going to pass it back to Jen. Thank you so much, Shay. So for the next sort of 10 or 15 minutes, um, we're gonna go through a, a visioning exercise for your business. So where we, where we look into the future to picture what that might look like for your business or destination in a perfect world. This helps to paint the picture of where you would like to get to sort of a long-term future. So an ideal sustainability vision would be imaginable. It gives a picture of your ideal world. It, it is desirable. It takes you to a place that appeals to employees and guests and other stakeholders. It is focused to give you a clear guide to decision-making. It is flexible, so it stays relevant even as circumstances change. And it is communicable. You should be able to explain it in under a minute. <laughs> it's your elevator pitch. So building a vision for the future of your organization, what if there were no barriers to achieving that future state? Envision your organization as 100% sustainable or regenerative in 2050. What are the newspapers writing about? What are the headlines? You know, be ambitious, think big. If money, time, knowledge, or other barriers did not exist. You know, this is really about thinking ahead. Think about all the categories of sustainability, environmental, social, economic, natural and cultural, as well as your sustainability management system. We're gonna give you a few quiet minutes to brainstorm and envision what that future could look like. Feel free to turn off your camera and jot down some ideas. We don't wanna give you any examples or hints. We don't wanna set any limits on your imagination. We just want you to think big, be creative, be bold, be ambitious, and think about, you know, think about 2050, or if that's just too unimaginable for you, think of 2030. You know, what, what would that business look like if, if it was around sustainability? I'm sure there's lots of other things you'd like to see it do, but in the realm of sustainability, what does that future state look like? We're gonna give you five quiet minutes, and then we're gonna report back some of those vision statements.
just about another one or so minutes. Okay, I see Shannon just doing some great writing there. I think, look, she's got lots of <laughs> lots of ideas. Um, so this is just a fun exercise, and you know, I'd really love for those that would be willing to share, to inspire each other with our vision statements for a sustainable future for your business, your organization, your destination, and of course, the biosphere region. Please pick one of your ideas, type your favorite statement into the chat box and share it with the group. If you're willing to share verbally, you're welcome to do that too. And this may help to inspire those who are a little bit stuck who, or who have trouble looking past tomorrow. And honestly, sometimes I do have trouble looking past tomorrow. And you know, we'd love for those to be popped in the chat, open up your chat, take a screenshot, you know, just think of, the way in which you guys could share and this this optimistic future you can either put it in the chat or you can raise your hand or unmute yourself and and share some of those future state future statements i find this challenging because <laughs> so the clothing industry so for those of you who don't know i have a clothing store the clothing industry is like the largest creator of pollution and etc cetera, etc cetera. so i find this to be like a challenging thing for me um because you know really i should just not be in the business at all <laughs> however you know i'm not like i obviously try to focus on brands that are eco um sustainable but even in that sense, still creating quite a carbon footprint. So it's like, I don't know, is my vision um, completely locally sourced and made um, eco-friendly brands at accessible pricing? Because eco-friendly brands are not cheap, which make it not accessible for all people as much as maybe they want to create a wardrobe of 100%, you know, um, natural fibers, or you use brands that are reducing the water they use to create their clothes to X percent. Um, it's not accessible to so many people. And so I don't know, is my vision as simple as that locally sourced and made with zero carbon footprint eco brands at accessible pricing? I don't know. Do you know what I mean? Yes, or is I, the idea that clothes should all be just thrifted and reused and stop producing so much clothing and get out of this business completely? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what makes you so special, Shannon. That's what I put in the in the chat is that that 
that's what makes your contribution to this so special because you're in an industry that it, it's difficult to do that. And you work so hard to make a difference and you're already doing so many things um, in terms of sustainability. And the fact that you're in that industry and it's that challenging, that industry needs people like you who who do care enough to make a difference. So I think that it's super important and relevant that you that you um continue to do all your hard work that you're doing. And there are mm-hmm. people who who it matters to them too and there I think that there is an audience there or or a customer base there. Yeah, I mean me like personally I mean any clothes that clothing that I get rid of out of my wardrobe does go to consignment shops because they want them recycled and reused. And I try extremely hard to focus on only very necessary pieces in my wardrobe. And it's like the same thing, just because I'm having a sale doesn't mean it's a good deal for you to buy something. I really try hard to educate my customers. Don't buy something you don't need. It's only a good deal if you actually need that piece of clothing and it's on sale. And so it's like, I'm in this industry where, you know, it's not the great, greatest environmentally, um, but that I'm trying to educate my customer, like stop with the, the fast shopping. Let's think about meaningful pur- purchase, purchases, right? And so it's just like, I'm just like in conflict. <laughs> it's like... It's definitely not easy, but th- you know, think about the impact that that industry could have if everyone operated the way that you're mm-hmm. describing, right? You might feel like you're just one small operation that that can't influence a greater change, but I'd have to argue that that you can, especially if everyone mm-hmm. starts to think that way, and and maybe having that diverse range of of brands, like you mentioned, you know, where mm-hmm. you are thinking about those locally sourced items and you know, certainly wanting to appeal to as many customers as you can, but, um, but yeah, I I can feel the conflict for you for sure. (laughs) Um, but you know, we're not encouraging you to change your career by any means. Um, you know, (laughs) but yeah, but just, you know, focusing, like you said, on, on that procurement strategy and then, you know, other things that you can do within your own Mm -hmm. operation that, you know, may not necessarily impact the, the entire global industry, but I do, yeah. I hear you. I read about that, that industry quite a lot and, and yeah. have really tried to make some, some personal changes in my own mm-hmm. purchasing habits because of it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Anyway, you know I didn't really come up with a great vision statement, I guess, is the end of that, except for just that simple thing, locally sourced eco brands at accessible pricing, like that's know. perfect. That's a perfect vision statement. And you know what? It it might be possible. You never know. <laughs> um, Noelle, I feel like you've probably been jotting down a few ideas. You, you're always coming up with great ideas. Yes. Yeah, so, so ours is a little bit, um, I'll, I'll just read it. So known as a leader in sustainable travel opportunities, the Frontenac Arch Biosphere offers a rich experience for travelers who are eco-conscious and passionate about sustainability. Bring your electric vehicle or hoverboard, because you said it was 2050, <laughs> um, and explore this beautiful region of businesses and attractions who are passionate about sustainability and conservation. So this is, when you'd said 2050, I pictured that we're doing this program for 30 years and this is where we're all at and everybody who lives and works in the biosphere and who owns a business in the biosphere that we're all on the same page and we're all um, taking these steps to be more sustainably conscious and that's kind of where my head went (laughs) and I definitely think that it can be done I think that the whole world is moving in this direction right now so we're just on the forefront of it (laughs) I think that's great and very inspiring. And I, I have a fairly strong feeling it won't take you to 2050 to get there. You know, you guys have already, you know, started this process and, you know, you've had great participation so far. So it's definitely a, a common feeling, it seems, amongst your businesses that you're, that are already participating. And I think there's a few in the chat. Do you want to go through those for me, Adam? Sure. Um, the Wild Gar- Garden Botanical Sanctuary is home to dozens of species of at-risk native plants. I love that, that oh, environmental yeah. side. That's a good one. And then the Donkey Path to Sustainability. 
Uh, Anik, do you want to shed some light, give a little bit more <laughs> to that? I, I'm really curious. That sounds interesting. Um, she was having some um, audio issues <laughs> earlier, so she might not be able to, um, to yeah, expand. We, we, we switch off to- Oh, the, there you are. Yeah, we switch off to the computer, but sorry, my voice is not super nice because I have a- <laughs> No a problem, no problem. No, I call it the donkey path to sustainability because in our business, we have donkeys and we do activities uh, and we are 100% of grid, but being of grid and developing sustainability takes a slow, um, slow different steps and you you have to go slowly and observe nature and deal with nature so you cannot hurry that which is why i call it the the donkey path to sustainability mm. because donkeys bef before they they make any moves they need to be sure of of what they do and they observe before so that's why i call it this way <laughs> that's great yeah, that works on so many levels. That's that's yes. an awesome one, Anna. Yeah. You you hit it spot on. Um, I see I one here from uh, Alberto. the The business is fully accessible, and everyone feels welcome and included. I love that one. We I I hope all businesses you know make people feel that way. Go ahead, Adam. We also have Wendy's country market, which is supplying the community with healthy, safe, farm fresh produce and products while helping local producers become more sustainable. Again, it has the community, it has that environment component, and you know, that economics creating this prosperous business that is really doing a good service to the community by providing healthy and delicious food. So I love Wendy's. <laughs> Do we have any others in there that's been shared? Awesome. Well, those are some absolutely great vision statements. I hope everyone's feeling inspired. I certainly can't wait to come and visit all of your many businesses one day. So jot those down, you know, do some more envisioning on your own time. You know, what, what does that future state look like and how do we get there? And really that's part of this broader exercise of these workshops that we're, that we're going through right now. You know, it's, it's about motivating you to think optimistically, even though we know there's some true and some true challenges, Shannon, like you mentioned, you know, but keep those goals in mind as we start to build out short and medium term goals. So you're sort of taking that vision for 2030 or 2050, and we're going to work backwards from there. So for the next workshop in January, we'll be covering the following. We'll be on step three of the sustainable tourism framework, and there will be some homework based on what we covered today. So this is the plan phase. So with baseline performance measured and key sustainability challenges, opportunities, and successes identified, we will guide participants through the next step of how to develop an, a, a, a really personal and customized action plan, a set of sustainability goals and targets, and really the beginning of creating that action plan to improve baseline performance over time as a journey and a cycle of continuous improvement. We know this is gonna take time. We really want you to think about small chunks things that you can do with the amount of time, bandwidth, capacity, resources that you have in your business. And when we refer to goal setting, how can you work backwards from that future vision to start to break this down into goals and actions that can be taken in the short, medium, and long term? I want to emphasize that ensuring your goals are specific to your business, measurable, relevant, achievable, and time bound. You know, we really want to keep ourselves accountable to a time frame based on what you have immediate control over or where you can have an immediate impact and where your personal passions lie. We're, we're happy to lean in to those passions because those are the ones that are going to make, they are going to have traction. Think about your own capacity, as I mentioned, and bandwidth, where your priorities are centered for your business and your organization. 
this is important to set you up for success in achieving these goals. So lastly, some homework ahead of workshop three, which is about mm, five, almost six weeks away from today. So we want you to complete your assessment if you haven't already, that's quite important. And then you'll be able to start identifying those opportunities, those areas for improvement. Going into that scorecard as Shay demonstrated, pulling out those lower comment, the, those lower scoring areas. And while you're there, you know, pat yourself on your on the back for those highest scoring areas as well. And start to really think about how you might communicate some of those strengths to your visitors, to your guests, to your staff, sharing your sustainability story. Take a deeper dive into some of those areas where you have room for improvement, maybe pulling out three to five key areas. Read through the questions and answer options as we start to prepare for goal setting. Reflect on potential goal areas based on your results, but also based on those immediate priorities and taking into consideration who will implement those actions associated with achieving these goals. They won't happen on their own. We also would suggest you do some best practices research online on examples of businesses and organizations that might be similar to yours in your sector. So your same business type who are doing sustainability very well, either just because you know about them or maybe they are doing a great job of sharing some of their practices, their initiatives, their programs, and, and really just take some notes about what you think they're doing well. And so far you have taken the sustainability assessment or plan to, so you know how your organization measures up to the Global Sustainable Tourism Council sustainability framework. Another goal may be to capture some other metrics such as energy or fuel consumption, or maybe it will be to conduct a purchasing audit to uncover where your goods and services are coming from. This would allow you to set a goal to improve your local purchasing by X percent over the course of the next year or two. You may wish to set a goal to provide more transparency to your sustainability story by adding a dedicated space on your website to share your goals and actions and ultimately your progress and your achievements. This will help to share your ongoing commitment and attract both visitors and employees who share the same values as you do. Really the list goes on, but start small. Two to four goals in the first year is plenty. So lastly, I wanted to share some tourism industry resources that I would recommend checking out while you're doing your best practices research or maybe looking to expand your knowledge. We, of course, can only cover so much in these sessions. These are not-for-profit organizations. They're a global network of professionals who are taking collective action for environmental and social justice. Each network promotes utilizing tourism as a force for good so that travelers can cultivate connections with themselves, family and friends, nature, culture, and a new way of seeing things while supporting companies that align with their values. They have authored many articles, blog posts, handbooks for the industry to use and reference. They also offer webinars and training opportunities and typically they're all free. We also have a number of resources on our website, including our Sustainable Tourism 2030 Pledge, where we would encourage you to become a signatory and join a community of like-minded businesses who are committed to measuring and improving their sustainability performance, which you're already well on your way of doing. And we also have a webinar gallery with recorded webinars on things like carbon footprint measurement, reduction and offsetting, and how to share your sustainability story. That's, that's really key, you know, it's, it is really about that transparency and bringing those stakeholders on this journey with you. And we'll be looking to add more topics to our webinar library in the new year. So that's a wrap for us tonight. Uh, we're right on time and I know we covered a lot and we had to go through a few things relatively quickly. So we're happy to take any questions for our team here tonight, if anybody has any. Any questions from the group? You're all welcome to pop it in the chat if you have, have any audio troubles. 
So as mentioned earlier, we are planning to send a list of resources out to you in a follow up email. We are also also going to be sending you a survey link, much like we did after the first session, and we would really appreciate your feedback if you have a chance to quickly fill that out for us. Am I allowed to, um, am I on mute? No, I'm unmuted. <laughs> am I allowed to, do you care if I, I post my screen that says um, changing the world one business at a time with your tiny little face in the corner and, and <laughs> green step? <laughs> Sure, I'd be happy for you to post my tiny <laughs> on little my face. Social, on my social media, it's just, it's down there, right down there. Yeah, don't forget to, to tag the green step in there. Yeah, and of course, of course, of course, the fab organization as well. Yes. And uh, maybe I'll be famous in Ontario, maybe. <laughs> Green Step is famous in Ontario. Every time <laughs> I'm talking with other tourism professionals, Green Step Solutions keeps coming up. Every time we have, and Jen and I have talked about that before, about how popular you guys are. So, and it also speaks to this movement that's happening in southeastern Ontario right now, with with everybody starting to think more in terms of sustainability. So, I just wanted to say thank you so much to Jen and the whole team at Green Step. Um, I really enjoyed diving into the assessment a little deeper. Uh, especially with Shay kind of going through everything and how we can use those little tips and the little info buttons to start to incorporate those into our action plans. And I know that we're going to learn more about the action plans at the next webinar. So I'm, I'm just excited. Thank you guys so much. Thank you so much for having us, Noel. And uh, we're really looking forward to that next step where we're actually going to start to develop that action plan together. Thanks for the opportunity. Thanks for sharing, Shannon. Awesome. So with that, we'll, we'll say good night to everyone and just have a look out in your emails um, for our follow up communication letters. And um, just a reminder in the new year for our upcoming January webinar and uh, happy holidays to everybody. And thank you for coming. Have a good night.